Welcome to the tutorial adding and deleting keyframes. So let's get started right away with the five ways that you can add a keyframe to the timeline. So let's select the punching bag and give it a peg. Then if we click on the peg selection mode, any keyframes that we make to this drawing will automatically be placed on the peg above so the first way that you can insert a keyframe is by going to the top menu and selecting insert keyframe. Then let's make a slight movement by rotating the corner of the bounding box using the transform tool with the animate mode on. Then if you take the red playhead and drag it down to around frame 10, we can take a look at the second way of adding a keyframe and that's by right clicking on the cell where you would like to put the keyframe and selecting the menu item insert keyframe. Then in the camera view let's select the corner of the bounding box again and rotate it in the opposite direction. Then let's drag the red playhead one more time to about frame 8 and then use the keyboard shortcut command F6 or on Windows that's control F6 to add a keyframe and then once again rotate the bag back but this time not as far. Then if we drag the playhead down a few more frames, we can try the fourth way of adding a keyframe, which is actually the keyframe button right here, insert keyframe. And once again, we'll drag the bag this way. And then lastly, you can insert a keyframe just by moving the drawing object with the transform tool in the camera view with the animate mode selected. So just like that. So then if we bring our red playhead back to the front, click on the play back button, we can see our punching bag move due to the keyframed movement. So the types of keyframes that we just added are called coordinate keyframes because we're actually keying specific X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, but there are two other types of keyframes that you can add. One is to add a keyframe in duplicate drawing, and the third type is a position keyframe. So sometimes when you want to add a keyframe, you want to actually change the drawing at that keyframe. It's where you might do a drawing change or adjust the drawing. So to do this in one fluid movement, these keyframes here on the peg do not have any drawings associated with them. But if you click on the actual punching bag drawing, you can right click on it and say insert keyframe and duplicate drawing. So not only do you see here that um, there's a keyframe that's been created, but you notice there's a line here, a split, and that lets you know that this is all one drawing. This is the exposures have been extended to whatever frame this is, uh, frame 17. And then from frame 18 onwards, it's a different kind of drawing, and there's a keyframe there as well. So a position keyframe is a keyframe that you can add to either your peg or to the actual drawing. Um, let's just get rid of this the actual drawing layer, um, and what it does is it keys the X, Y, and Z position right here, uh, but it leaves out the scale, skew, and rotation, so it just keys the position. So I could drag this down a bit. You actually shouldn't do this. You shouldn't uh, keyframe on the drawing and the peg as well, so I'm just going to undo that. So let's maybe just go down here along the peg. Actually, one thing that you can do, and we did this for the Karate Rabbit um, when we were rigging it, is if you double click on the punching bag, so the drawing element and not the peg, you can bring up the layer properties again and you can, under the advanced tab, uncheck the box, animate using animation tools. So if you uncheck this, then you lose that plus sign and the option to um, animate all those different transformations, and so now you only have those options on the peg. So to add a position keyframe, you simply need to click on the cell where you would like to add that keyframe, and then from the top menu, go to Insert Position Keyframe. It automatically went to the peg of the punching bag, and as you can see here, there was only a keyframe placed on the X, Y, and Z positions, but not on the scale, skew, and rotation. 
So once again, we selected the punching bag, but because we have this selected and because we can't animate on the actual drawing element, it went directly onto the peg. So let's hide that for a moment. So there are actually several different ways of deleting a keyframe. Um, the first way being that you can right click on a keyframe and select delete keyframes. As you saw right beside it, you could also, let's undo that, you could also use the keyboard shortcut Shift F6 and that deletes a keyframe. We'll undo that one more time. You can also go to the top and instead of going to insert, you're actually going to go under the animation menu and select delete keyframe. So there are several different ways of deleting a keyframe. There are actually two types of keyframes that you can have. There's motion and stop motion. So what you're seeing here are motion keyframes. And motion keyframes have what we call interpolation uh, between the two keyframes. Um, if you're a flash user, the term that you probably use is tweening. Um, and what that actually means is that you're allowing the computer to make the movements between two keyframes. A lot of animators actually prefer to do this themselves. They'd rather do the in-betweens themselves and they that's when they use stop motion keyframes. So to create a stop motion keyframe you simply need to select the keyframe, right click on it, and select set stop motion keyframe. So now you can see between this keyframe here, the third one, and the fourth one, you no longer see a gray arrow. And what that means visually in the camera view is this. So you see it swing back and forth, back and forth, and then from here it holds its position and then jumps. So there's none of those in-between drawings rendered automatically, it just there's a, a jump. Um, and for this case in particular that looks kind of a strange, but there are instances when you really do want to be able to precisely key um, the movements that you want and usually these keyframes are closer together so you don't see an obvious jump like that. There is actually one more way that you can create a stop motion keyframe. So let's select um, the first frame here and it's by clicking on this button here, set stop motion keyframe. So as you can see, once again the interpolation has disappeared and you can actually set it back to a motion keyframe by clicking the button just beside set motion keyframe. So like that. There's also a way to toggle between the motion and stop motion keyframes. So if we uncollapse the punching bag peg and we double click on one of its position uh, layers, what we open up is the function editor. So you can always select one of the keyframes. So these each represent a different keyframe and it is exactly what you see here in the timeline. Um, so this keyframe that we selected is exactly the keyframe that's on frame 10. Um, and if we want to create this into a stop motion keyframe as well, we can click on this option here, stop motion keyframe. So now this has become a stop motion keyframe as well, but just for position X. So it's remained um, a motion keyframe for the position Y and Z. And then we can unclick that again if we want to put it back to the way that it was. So the last thing I want to show you is how to change the constant Z. So down below here, I believe it was with the door, we were playing around with the 3D rotation. However, what we want to look at now is a 3D path. So what we have here, because we only see rotation angle Z, is we do not have a 3D path selected. So if I double click on the peg, the layer properties window opens. So right now we have everything separate on the transformation tab. But if we actually select position 3D path, we can also make 3D paths um, that recede into space in the perspective view. And in order to be able to see the constant Z in the function editor, you have to, from this path field where it says local, click on the down arrow and select create 3D path. Then if you click on the function button, you open up its function, the function editor as well, the 3D path editor, and here you can select the option constant Z. And what that does is it keeps the Z axis constant even if you're making movements on the X and Y axis.
So that's it for the tutorial adding and deleting keyframes. Stay tuned for the next tutorial animating the camera.